All right, guys, Darren from FBA Elite, and welcome back to another video. So in this video, I wanna talk about walking away, a skill that you will have to master if you are to become a successful Amazon seller. And the reason I wanted to make a video about this is I mentor a lot of people, a lot of people pay me for advice. And often I'll give them advice and they still won't heed that advice and they'll fight against it with all their will because they don't wanna walk away from something they've already invested time and money into. So in this video, I'm gonna talk you through five different products, some of which I actually sold and some of which I come very close to selling and explain to you why I walked away from these products. So hopefully it helps you to learn this for yourself. So when you've found a product that you're trying to make work that doesn't really work, or maybe you're selling a product and you've, it's not really working as you'd hoped it would, you can make that decision to walk away and move on to the next opportunity. Because that's the great thing with Amazon. There is always another opportunity just around the corner. So the first product that I want to share with you guys is Picnic Blankets. So this is my very first product that I did not launch. As you guys know, my first product I actually started selling was car boot liners. But this was the very first product that I brought samples, so I ordered three or four samples into the UK, spent an absolute fortune, like $100 a time bringing these samples in. I developed the product, I had some ideas of how I wanted to stand out. But then at the last moment, as I was still learning Amazon FBA at the time, one thing hit me and I had to walk away and I launched my backup product. And this is another lesson as well. Whenever you're looking at one product, still be looking at other products. So if you decide to walk away, it's a lot easier. I could walk away from the picnic blankets knowing I had the car boot liners. And looking back, it looks like it was a very good decision as the cart liners went on to sell kind of 300,000 pounds worth over a few years. So these picnic blankets, why did I walk away? Well, now is actually probably a great time to demonstrate this as we're in June, 2023. And I would have first found this product probably around about April, May, 2018. And I quite like a number of the things, especially the demand was really well spread across the niche. And that's always a good thing. I like it when demand is well spread out as it gives you a much wider landing zone to aim for. But the reason that I ended up walking away from this niche is if we bring up the search volume here, and search volume is one of the best tools you can use for checking seasonality. We can see that when I would have been analyzing around April, May time, the figures looked really good. And in the summer, obviously they sell a lot more, but then out of season, as soon as you get into early September, or depending on how quickly the weather turns in the UK, the demand drops off massively. And I'm not talking like halving, we're talking from a search volume of 75,000 down to three to 4,000. That is a massive reduction. Now, when you're launching a product on Amazon, it always takes at least a few months. So if you found this product today and started to sell picnic blankets, you probably wouldn't be getting them in the UK until September, October time, which means you'd be completely out of season. And that was why at the last minute in April, May time, despite spending hundreds of pounds on samples, I'd say, no, this product is not the right choice for me because the time they're gonna hit the UK, we're gonna be out of the summer season and sales are gonna have dropped off. So as a new seller at the time, I didn't pay enough attention to seasonality until the last minute and thankfully, I was able to spot it. So that's one reason you might decide to walk away from a product. You may be aware of the seasonality, but you may also be unaware that you've analyzed it at a particular time and the sales you're gonna to expect to see are very different to what you're seeing at the moment. So always be aware of that with seasonal products. At what point are you carrying out the analysis and at what point will your stock be arriving in the UK? Because often there's a few month window between those two. The second product, and this is a product I went on to sell and at its peak, I was selling, I think on its highest day, I sold just under 100 units of this in one day. So this product was, it was a good performer for me. And my first batch sold out super quick and the second patch was going really, really well. So what happened? Why did I stop selling these car key signal blocking pouches or RFID blocking pouches? Basically they're for keyless cars and it's supposed to stop the signal from escaping from the pouch. So when I took on this niche, I knew it wasn't for new sellers, but I just ha I'd had two success. My first two products had been really, really successful. So this first product, I was feeling pretty confident. So I was happy to take on this crazy niche where people were making thousands of sales per month. I was making good profits. I was happy to invest in PPC. And like I say, things had taken off really well. I had some days where I was selling nearly three figures in units per day. So I was really happy with how it was going. 
So what I did, I developed this product and my USP was these pouches are lined with a particular fabric which blocks a signal. So I developed one and called it a triple layer pouch. So I was just basically leaning on the fact people are gonna see mine saying we've got triple layer fabric and I got a render done, an exploded render showing all of the layers in there and it really, really cool versus these ones which are just single layer and I marketed it that way and it did really, really well. And then what happened when I got to about 40 to 50 reviews in, something like that, I received a negative review and it wasn't just a negative review, it was a negative video review. Someone that had clearly had issues with these pouches before with other pouches posting my product saying, oh, and let, uh, yeah, another one that doesn't work with my car. I made a video review of her using the pouch with the car. And that that review alone hit my conversion rate enough to kill my ranks and I never recovered from there. So I actually walked away from this product when I still had 500 units in stock because these were costing me, I think less than, I think it was about $1.50 for a two pack. It was something ridiculously cheap and it would have cost me more in PPC to continue selling them. So. I made the decision to walk away from the product and move on to the next products, which brings me on to lunch bags, which is one of the products I regret probably the most because I actually know other people that sell successfully in this niche. And I walked away from this niche because it was at the point where my business had just hit the VAT threshold. So within the first few months of selling my first two products, um, I'd hit the 85 grand revenue, which is in a 12 month rolling period, and I had to become VAT registered. So as that happened, I was gonna be losing over a pound profit per unit. So all of a sudden, the margins were looking very tight. If you're selling a product at around about 15 pound, which is what I was aiming for, one pound is a good chunk of your profit margin. So things were starting to look a bit tight, but also when I first found the lunch bags, my first two products had been successful and the key pouch was going really well. But the key pouch, had failed during the process of me looking into lunch bags and bringing in the sample. So that really dented my confidence. So without that PPC margin, and with that, without that five pound plus margin to spend on PPC and give you that profit margin and becoming VAT registered, at the last moment, I decided not to proceed with the lunch bags. Despite the fact the products that I developed at the time, I still use some of them today. Um, but this niche has been really bottomed out now. So many of these products sell super cheap. So it, in some ways, maybe it wouldn't have been a long-term niche anyway. So it's certainly something to keep in mind that when you do become VAT registered, it is gonna hit your margin. So if your products are very, very tight to begin with and you're not VAT registered, think how bad it's gonna be when you do become VAT registered. Uh, next up is the car bootliner, which is the very first product I sold. I sold this for a good few years, made a good amount of money with this product and it's what I built this channel on, you know, the knowledge of launching the product, developing the brand. This is where I started in 2018. And the main reason I stopped selling this product is that the profitability was going down and down as more, more new sellers entered the niche, not necessarily great products, but somehow I still, to this day, I'm not certain what they were doing. Somehow they were creating incredible ranks with terrible photography. And you can see this yourself. If you go to the car bootliner niche nowadays, these these ignore the sponsored listings. Look at the top seller here, this one. This is all, this has been like this since day one, since I started on selling on Amazon. This is a Cura bootliner because it's cheap, it's always done well, and because it's an Amazon brand. But look at that photography. They say you need good photography to sell on Amazon. Look at this. It's absolutely atrocious. But their price point always kept them near the top. And then we've got everyone else that started entering the niche. And if I open all of these, I guarantee they're all the same. You've got these terribly Photoshopped dogs. You can see that just behind my head there. Um, another one there, absolutely awful Photoshop. And to this day, it really frustrates me that these guys were able to get traction because they were doing stuff to manipulate review counts. I'm not saying all of them were, some of them were. Uh, and somehow they were generating sales and the conversion rate must've been high enough that mine started to look poor in comparison. But also what happened, it was during 2020 and 2021 when Amazon started to restrict the sale of some products. So non-essential products all of a sudden had a three or four week lead time. So I think in one month I didn't sell anything because Amazon made all my products had a four week lead time because of the fact they were prioritizing essential goods. So that really hit ranks. And then we had the supply issues as well. So I was in about stock 
probably four or five times in one year. And the, the more I kept going out of stock, the harder it was to get the ranks back each time. Until we got to a point on the final batch, I was ordering, I think, I think it was 1,200 bootliners at a time. So about three months worth of stock at a time. So when I ordered these, it's like an eight grand commitment up front. Plus you've got the eight grand of stock that's just arrived. So you've got the your in-stock inventory, which is going to last you three months. So that's eight grand allocated. And then you order in the next batch, which is going to arrive in three months because you've got four to five week lead time for it being manufactured, then four to five weeks on a boat and another week or two to Amazon. So you're always paying for two batches of stock. So I was selling at the point where the profits were getting tighter and I was thinking, do I want to outlay another eight grand on this when the current batch is just about profitable? So I made the decision at the time, I'm going to walk away from this product and if I do come back into this niche, it's going to be with a new product with a stronger selling point because when I entered this niche, I wasn't so focused on having a visual selling point. So my product could easily be lost amongst the existing listings. So it's very important you have a visual selling point. So if you do get new competition, you've still got a way of visually standing out against them. And in 2018, I just didn't have the knowledge then to add that to my first product. So the fact that I even got three years out of that first product, I suppose is quite lucky. So that was another product that I walked away from. And then the final one, which I did a whole video, I think on this, which is the splash mats, the high chair splash mats, which is still quite an interesting niche. And if you could think of a way of adding value to this product, it is still certainly something that is interesting. But what I have seen is the price point has continued to come down, which as a VAT registered seller makes it very hard to compete. If you're not VAT registered, you probably can compete at this price point. Okay, but if you are VAT registered, unless you can really, really drive down that unit cost, in which case you're probably sacrificing the quality of the splash mat itself, you're going to struggle to compete. So there's still plenty of demand in this niche. But the key reason I did walk away, I just could not get to the point where I was 100% happy with the profit margin and the potential return on investment. And this is where so many sellers go wrong. They will try and force this product to work. As a new naive seller, I would have tried to force this product to work. But I knew based on my own experience how much I was likely to be spending on PPC that if I went for this product, it became high risk. And there's no need for a product to be high risk. There are always other opportunities. So as much as you might be stuck in a rut with a particular product, if things don't add up, stop trying to put that square peg in the round hole walk away there are hundreds of thousands of products or probably millions of products on amazon there are better opportunities if you're not confident in a product move on to the next one now if you want to know how i find products to sell on amazon i'm going to pop up a video now it will show you how i found 25 products in one week and i'll see you guys over there mm -hmm.